Hello everyone and welcome to Control Theory, Signal Processing, Machine Learning and Optimization Tutorials. In these tutorials we provide real and applicable knowledge of programming, optimization, controls and machine learning. This particular video tutorial is dedicated to the problem of compiling C++ or C code files in Linux or Unix systems by using the command line or the terminal. The main motivation for creating this tutorial mainly comes from the fact that mechatronics and control engineering students as well as signal processing students are not very familiar with the Linux or Unix command line. However, in many cases and real life scenarios, it's necessary to know how to use the Linux or Unix command line and how to quickly compile and run programs. This is especially the case for embedded system development. Before I start, I would like to mention a few important things. In this video tutorial, I will use this terminal and the Linux command line that you can see over here to explain how to compile the codes. However, those of you who are my subscribers or who follow this channel know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video and consequently here is the post. This post contains all the explanations and codes. A link to this post is given in the description below. Secondly, it took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this video and this post. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Okay, let's start. First, we need to become familiar with the Linux command line and with the terminal. Let's open the terminal. We'll click over here and over here we will type terminal. Here is our terminal. Let's expand this window. The first command that we will learn is the following command ls-l. This command will list the content of the current directory. Over here I can see that I have a few folders or directories and I can see some additional parameters. The next command that we will learn is pwd. This command will tell us the current directory that we are in. So we are currently in home Alexander. Next, let us learn how to create a new folder or new directory. We can do that by using this command make directory and we specify the name for example let's let's call this new folder test c1 let us display this folder and over here we can see that we have created a new folder or new directory called test c1 we can go to that folder or to that directory by typing cd and the name of the folder test c1 and let us verify that we are in that folder actually by typing pwd and we can see that we are at home alexander test c1 next let us create a c source code we can do that by typing gedit and the name of the file. gedit is a very powerful editor that can be called from the Linux command line. test1.c is the name of the file. After pressing the enter, I am in the editor. And over here, I will simply paste the code that I have prepared previously. This is a simple C code. Basically, this code declares and defines two integers, A and B, and it declares their sum. Then, we assign to sum A plus B, and we print the result. So, nothing special. This is an elementary C code, used only for illustration. So, let's save this code, and let's close the editor. 
let us display the content of the current directory. We can see over here that we have the file test1.c and the size of this file is 167. To compile the code, we will use the GCC compiler. GCC stands for the GNU Compiler Collection and it's a widely used compiler for compiling C or C++ code files in Linux. After specifying the name of the compiler, we need to specify the name of the source file. The source file is test1.c, then we add this parameter dash o and this parameter tells to the compiler that we want to specify the name of the executable file. Let the name of the executable file be test1 executable. Okay, let's press enter. And nothing happens. However, something happens in the background. Let's see what actually happened. Let's list the content of the current directory. Let's see what happened. Aha! Uh -huh. Over here we see that we have a new file called test1 executable and the size of this file is given over here. Next, let us run our compiled program. Since I'm coming from a Windows machine, I will try to do something like this. I will simply type test1 executable. And let's see the output. Aha! Uh -huh. I see the following message. Command not found. So there is some error over here. Basically, in the Linux system, we cannot execute the file like this. We need to specify the current path and we specify the current path by typing dot slash and then we can type the name test1 executable and let's run this program okay here is the result we get the output the sum of 5 and 7 is 12 perfect let us explain this command in more details dot slash is the current path. That is, this is the path to the executable file. Note that in the bash shell, the default path variable does not include the current working directory. This is why we need to add the current path before the name of the executable file. In Windows systems, this is not the case, because we can simply specify the name of the executable file and we know that the executable files in the Windows system have this extension. Next, I will explain how to properly compile a C++ code file. To do that, let us create an empty C++ code file. Let's call this file test2.cpp. Here, it's very important to specify the proper extension. C code source files have the extension .c, however C++ source code files have the extensions cpp. Here is our editor and over here I will simply paste a simple C++ code. This program is actually equivalent to the previous program. We define and declare two integers, a and b, and we declare sum, then we assign a plus b to the sum and we print the result. Okay, let's save this file and let's close this window. Next, let us use the GCC compiler to compile this file. Again, I'm typing GCC test2.com cpp dash object and let's call the executable file test2 executable and enter aha uh -huh. we are seeing bunch of errors so there are some errors we were not able to compile the source code and you can do that by typing ls dash l and we don't see test2 executable over here. So apparently there is a problem. And the problem comes from the fact that this command GCC cannot properly link all the libraries necessary to compile test2.cpp. 
instead of using the command GCC for C++ code, codes we need to use G++ command. So I will type G++ and I will specify the name of the source file. Output should be test2 executable and let's press enter. Let's see the result. Aha! Uh -huh. Over here I can see test2 executable. So let's try to execute this program by just typing dot slash and the name of the executable file and let's see the result. Aha! Uh -huh. Program works perfectly. The sum of 5 and 7 is 12. Now let us try to fix the problem with the GCC. That is, I will show you that you can still use the command GCC to compile C++ source code files. And we can do that by modifying the parameters of the GCC command. We need to add these parameters, dash ls tdc++. Again, the name of the source file and the name of the output file and I will call the output file test3 executable and let's see the result. Aha! Uh -huh. No errors. And let's see the output. Here is the output and we can see test3 executable. So let's try to execute this program and let's see the result. And I made an error here because it's executable. Let's see where is the error. Aha, uh -huh. and everything works perfectly. While compiling the source files, you can also activate the verbose mode. You can simply write dash V in front of the source code file and let's see the output you can see that the verbose mode gives you quite some information about the compiling process. I'm not going to explain this information in this video tutorial since I want to keep this video tutorial as short as possible. However, you can Google and you can find more information. This information is very useful for debugging the compiler problems. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much and have a nice day.